Hey there. Uh, we are back doing part two of our case study associated with our agricultural drain model. And hopefully you've completed uh, the other exercise, part one. And we're going to start with uh, where we ended up with that model, but we're going to make a number of changes to the model. We're going to add a well in the interior. Um, we are going to convert it from a one layer model to a six layer model. And we're going to do a flow budget analysis and look at um, uh, some different ways to represent the drains. And uh, by doing that, we're going to uh, become a little more experienced at, at using GMS. And also, hopefully, we'll start to gain a little bit of in insight and intuition into how groundwater systems work and how these uh, numerical solutions work. So <clears throat> it says to... Uh, Download a completed version of the previous model. Unzip the model, load it into GMS. Well, I, I still have a, a finished version of that model here, and so we're just going to start from that point. And uh, let's see what else it says. It says add a well in the interior. Uh, use Q equals minus 2,000 cubic feet per day, and then try it again with minus 5,000 feet per day, feet cubed per day. So let's try that out. Um, Okay, so I'm just going to um, right click. I'm going to randomly pick some point here in the middle and uh, right click and select sources and sinks. And I'm going to select wells here at the bottom and then add BC. And I'm going to do, I'm trying to remember what it was, minus 2000 cubic feet per day. Again, you can add a name if you want. It doesn't really impact the solution any and there's our well in the middle so uh, let's save this as uh, ag drains 2 so we can keep it separate from our previous solution I'll click save now by the way um, when you save one of these models let me bring up my uh, explorer window here and look at this so talking about the file structure here for a second uh, your, when you save a, a solution from GMS, it consists of multiple parts. First of all, there's this file that uh, has an extension, GPR, agdrains2.gpr. That stands for a GMS project file. And this has a bunch of information about the grid and your display options and, and a bunch of stuff that the GMS uh, needs to save and then read back in when you load the file to, to restore things to their full and proper order. But if you have a mod flow simulation associated with your project, you'll notice that in that same directory, there's a folder, and this one says agdrains2 underscore mod flow. And before we did mountain lake, so we have a mountain lake.gpr and a mountain lake underscore mod flow, agdrains1.gpr and agdrains1 underscore mod flow. So basically, uh, if you go into this mo underscore mod flow subdirectory, uh, this is where it saves all of the native mod flow input files associated with your simulation. And so these uh, file extensions here are all associated with mod flow. There's the .mfn. This is a name file. Uh, if we were to open that up with, uh, let's open it with a text editor here. Come on. Notepad. Let's try that. So there's our, there's our name file. It has the names of the of the other input file. So when you launch modflow from a command line, uh, it reads in the name file and then that gives it all the information it needs to open the other files. Um, let's look at a couple others. Let's look at the well file. This should be pretty short. Um, again, we'll open that with notepad. So there's only one well and this uh, describes the input to the uh, well file and so forth and so on. So yeah, that's uh, so just remember when you save a mod flow simulation, it'll prompt you for the name of the project file, but it also saves this other file in, in the in the subdirectory. So if you ever want to zip up your mod flow solution, your GMS mod flow solution, you need to make sure you use it both the GPR file and the subdirectory and then preserve that directory structure in your zip archive or you're going to lose some information. 
All right, so let's go back here. Uh, we've saved this and we're ready to run. And we now see um, the cone of depression associated with that well. Um, again, if you want to, you can change those contours to be a little bit different and turn off those cell edges. And there's our cone of depression. So we had this kind of the symmetric thing down the middle and then this cone of depression on the side. This one might be a little interesting to go into oblique view. If I exit ortho mode and then go into oblique view, you could maybe, well, I guess it's not going to stretch that in Z, but you can kind of see that, how that looks. Um, you can also, uh, let's see if I turn on those grid cells, edges again. And if I select a cell somewhere and then go into side view, whoops, where is my, where are my contours of head? Let's see here. Oh, I got to go into, back into ortho mode. So <clears throat> here are my heads and I'm going to start, I'm using this little counter here to uh, increment my row counter and at some point I should get close there it is so there's the row that has the well in it and there's just a little subtle drop there as you get near that well and uh, it looks you know more pronounced when you're in plan view but there's a little bit of a cone of depression around that well and how pronounced that is is going to be a function of your hydraulic conductivity uh, primarily um, also impacted some by your by your recharge rate. So that's kind of interesting and if we go in here and right click and increase that pumping rate to minus 5000 and then save and uh, run that model let's see what we get now. We get an even deeper cone of depression now it goes down to uh, 3820 right around the, the cell containing the well and you can see it has a more pronounced effect there and so you know in general you'll get some drawdown at your wells the, the magnitude of the drawdown is a function of the pumping rate and the hydraulic conductivity generally the the lower the hydraulic conductivity the, the steeper that uh, steeper and deeper that cone of depression will be um, and if you have a, a high value of hydraulic conductivity the impact will be spread out over a larger area and the drawdown at the well is not not going to be as great so that's a pattern we'll we'll see more more and more as we go on all right so what's next analyze the flow budget select the cells on each side and change the budget ids use two on the left and three on the right so um let's look at the flow budget here see what we're talking about so gms and modflow have this thing called the flow budget so if we bring up the flow budget, by default, it's going to say uh, just some very basic information. So um, we have, uh, let's see, number of selected cells. I need to, I had a cell selected when I went in there, so I need to unselect it. To unselect a cell, you just click outside the grid. Now when I go back, okay, this is more like it. So it says, um, we have 26,349 cubic feet per day going out of the drains. That's a lot of water going out of the drains. Um, if you really did, we're losing this much water, um, that would probably be a problem. Um, but uh, we have a really high value of hydraulic conductivity. We've got a lot of water coming in. Um, and so that's what how it works out. We have 5,000 uh, cubic feet per day going out of the wells of the well, I should say. We only have one well. And then recharge 31,350 coming in. These two numbers, if you add up these two numbers, they should exactly balance this number. And it's it doesn't, it's not quite a perfect balance, but it's close. The rest of that is just numerical round off error. And so, uh, you know, if we had other kinds of boundary conditions here, rivers and general head and things like that, they would show up. But right now, this is all we've got. So this is a complete flow budget. Now, 
one of the questions we might want to ask is of that 26,000 cubic feet going out of the constant head, uh, how much is going out of the right and how much is going out of the left? Well, it doesn't tell us that right away, but there's a way we can uh, we can figure that out. So I'm going to use the select column tool and I'm going to double click on that column on the left, so this left side, and I'm going to go down here to the cell properties and there is this at the very bottom there's a zone budget ID. By, by default everything in the grid has a zone budget ID of 1. So I'm going to change that to 2 and then I'm going to double click on the one on the right and I'm going to change that to a zone budget ID of 3. Okay, um, let me just verify quickly that's what we're trying to do. Um, yeah, two on the left, three on the right. So now when I go back to my flow budget and click on zones, uh, it says for um, we have uh, from zone one to zone two. So that's the, the middle of the, remember everything in the middle is zone one. So uh, from zone one to zone two, by the way, when you first bring this up, it tells you it's on this main tab cells. So if you click on zones, it uses the zones you've defined and, and does some summations here for you. So uh, we have 26,000 um, cubic feet per day going out of the two, two uh, constant head boundary conditions. Of that, 19,000 feet goes to the left and 7,261 goes to the right. So out of, again, out of 26,000, 19,000 goes to this one on the left, 7,000 to the one on the right. So that's, that's a big difference. And uh, why is that such a difference? Remember, this one has an elevation of 3820. This one has an elevation of 3824. So that four foot difference causes, um, uh, let's see, about three quarters of the water uh, to drain to the left as opposed to draining to the right. So that's kind of surprising. Well, that might be somewhat influenced by our well. So let's, let's get rid of that well for a second. Let me use the select cell tool. Let's go in here and uh, let me right click on that well and I'm going to select delete BC. Let's see, there we go. Now it's gone. And I'm going to save and run mod flow again. And now we're back to this symmetric solution. But now if we look at the flow budget and go to the zones tab, um, pretty well, let's see. Let's go. Let's start here. So we we no longer have uh, 5,000 uh, cubic feet per day going to the well. So we have 31,350 going in to recharge. 31,350 going out, and that is partitioned about 20,000 to the left and about 10,000 to the right. So now we have about a two-thirds, one-third split uh, between the left and the right in our model. So. Yeah, this, this flow budget utility, you know, it's not super sexy, but man, it, uh, it is really convenient. And sometimes uh, some of the most important things we learn about our model are, are based on the flow budget. And I've been involved with many studies where the flow budget was really the most important part of the output, uh, more so than, you know, the distribution of heads. Okay, uh, now the next thing we're going to do is we are going to determine uh, what kind of impact we have by having a one-layer model versus a six-layer model. And before we do so, um, we're, going to, uh, we're going to do something here. We're going to go in and turn off those cell edges. And uh, let's see, I want to change the contour options. I'm going to go back in and say I just want linear contours. And we have 10 contours here. Let's see, let's try that. And those are our contours. Um, let's do something a little bit differently. Instead of just saying 10 contours, let's have a specified interval. 
Let's see how that looks. We have contour interval of 0 0.5. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to convert that display to a CAD layer. And I'm going to do, uh, let's see, let's give this a name. Uh, we're going to, what we're going to do, let me back up a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to make some changes to the model. We want to compare what that does to the contours versus what we have with our current model. See if it has a big change or not. And to do that, we want to compare these contours versus some contours we're going to compute in the future. And uh, there's a little trick you can do to, to pull that off is you can, you can convert the current display into a CAD file, a DWG file, and then save that and then that becomes a, a layer in your display that you can toggle on and off. So we're going to right click and say convert to CAD and we're going to call um, this to be original orig underscore contours DWG and there we have it. So if I turn off my grid you can see that these are layers I can kind of toggle on or off. So I'm just going to hold that there, and uh, let's see, let's turn our grid cells, cell edges back on, and we'll save that, and we're ready to go to the next step. And the next step says, uh, set the contours to a fixed interval, and save a con well, I did 0 0.5, not 1, but that'll be okay. Rebuild the model using a multi-layer grid, six layers. Assign head BC to the top layer only and re-enter the inputs in the order uh, shown above. So uh, let KH equals KV for now. So all right, so we're going to rebuild this model. I'm going to go back to GMS. And we are going to create a new grid. And that's going to delete the existing grid and the existing mod flow data. And, uh, okay, we're going to set this equal to 0, and the uh, length in x will be 2,000, and y it's going to be 0 and 3,000. And by the way, and the number of cells in x is 40, the number of cells in y is 60, and uh, in z, or again, our origin is going to be 3,600 feet. The length will be 232. And now instead of one cell, we're going to do six cells. So it's going to be a six-layer grid. Turn that off. So I'm going to switch into side view. So this is, um, let's see, let's turn those contours off for now. So we have six layers. I still have the vertical scale exaggerated by a factor of five. But um, here, let's go into ortho mode and rotate this thing around. So now you can kind of see what that looks like there. We have, instead of a single layer, we have multiple layers. Let me go back into, let's see. mouse just lost its battery. Let's try this. Here we go. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> Had to hurry and swap out the battery on my mouse. Sorry about that. Um, let's see. Let's go back in and change this to Z magnification of 1. There we go. So that's kind of the true scale of what we're looking at. Um, all right. So let's go back to plan view. And uh, we'll hurry and recreate the model. Go mod flow new simulation. Uh, turn on the recharge package. Um, everything else should be okay. We'll hydraulic conductivity. Now this is really important. Instead of doing constant to layer, we need to do constant to grid. And what that does is it assigns the value we enter to all the layers and not just the currently visible layer. So that is four. And then we'll double click on the recharge rate, which applies to the top only. So we'll do constant to array, and that is 0 0.0055. Okay. And now <clears throat> we are going to reapply our boundary conditions. 
so I'm I'm looking at the top light. So we're we're in ortho mode. So we're looking at uh, plan view now, and uh, there's a we're looking at the top layer. There's a little layer controller right here that allows us to cycle through our different layers. Not sure why those are not showing up, but uh, we do have multiple layers here, and we're just going to assign. Um, we're going to assign our boundary conditions just to the top layer, and I'll explain that in a little more detail in a minute. So again, we'll do specified head on the left, 3820, and specified head on the right of uh, 3824. There we go. Now, what happens when we look at it in the front? Um, oh, there's, oh, there we go. Something was messed up with our eye bound array. All right, so uh, I just clicked on that and it refreshed it. I'm not sure what was going on there. But uh, so this is a cross section through our model. And now we have the drain only in the top layer. Before we had one layer, so the drain effectively kind of impacted the entire layer and the flow was just mainly horizontal. Well, now we should get some vertical components to flow. So that water is going to come in and it's going to kind of cycle down and then up to this uh, cell on the top. So the question is, by switching from one layer to six layers, um, you know, what is that going to do to our overall flow budget and uh, head contours and so forth? So uh, let's see, we have recharge, we have hydraulic connectivity, we have our boundary conditions. Um, we should be able to save this and run. So now we read that in, and uh, well, let's go to let's do our block color fill plus linear first. So the solution looks uh, pretty similar here. I'm gonna turn these uh, contours off. Let's see. Oh, I wonder why they're not going off here. Here we go. All right, so these are our contours. Let me turn off the uh, cell edges for a second. And let's go to uh, specified interval 0 0.5. So let's go to linear again. There we are. All right, so here we go. So here's our, I'm going to toggle these on and off. So this is off, this is on. So you'll see there's just a little bit of a difference. It makes, uh, you can't, over on the right, these these contours are identical. There's a little bit of a difference right there. But uh, on, there's, a, there's more of an impact on the left. So yeah, it makes a difference. Not a huge difference, but it does make a difference um, in our solution. Let's look at our flow path, our flow budget, excuse me, wrong button, uh, flow budget. So we have, uh, let's look at the zones. Oh, whoops. We've got to, we've got to set our zones up. So let me, let me fix that. Let's go back in, turn our cell edges on. And I need to go into, uh, I'm on the top layer and I'm going to, uh, double click on these cells on the left change the zone budget to 2, and then double click on the cells on the right using the select column tool, change that flow budget ID to 3, and now if I go back and click on zones, here we go. So zone 1 to zone 2, 19,720, I think before we had like 21,000, and zone one to zone three, it's eleven thousand. Before we had ten thousand, so yeah, it makes a difference. Not a huge difference. Um, you know, you could argue in in, in this particular case, um, given the uncertainty and the hydraulic conductivity and the recharge, you know, you're probably just as accurate with a one layer model as a six layer model. Um, so yeah, it doesn't make that big of a difference. Sometimes it makes a big difference. And uh, sometimes it doesn't. 
Um, so by the way, uh, let's let's consider another issue though. When we uh, specified the hydraulic conductivity, uh, we have HK or the hydraulic conductivity equals four in all layers, and which is what we had before. But um, there's something else in the LPF package that's really important. And now that we have multiple layers, the vertical hydraulic conductivity matters. And um, there are two ways you can specify that. You can either enter an anisotropy factor, which is the ratio of the horizontal to the vertical hydraulic conductivity, and by default that is three. Or you can specify ver the vertical hydraulic conductivity explicitly. So, so what we had what we had by default was a was a ratio of three. But let's suppose that the ratio should be more like five. So that would mean our uh, vertical K would be 0 0.8. So 3 divided by 5, um, uh, excuse me, um, constant. Oh, this is, the, this is the vertical K. It should be 0 0.8. So the horizontal K is 4, K. And 4 divided by 5 is 0 0.8. So now we have 0 0.8. Make sure I got that. Okay, I got that on all layers. So, um, yeah, let's see what, uh, what impact that has on our solution. So, um, well, let's go look at the flow budget first. So here we have in our zones 20,000 and 11,000. So yeah, it's actually, again, uh, it's, in this case, it, it made it by increasing our horizontal anisotropy, so it's more biased to the horizontal level. It makes it more similar to our one-layer model. Well, that, that would make sense because with a one-layer model, you're basically saying the flow rate, the flow is perfectly horizontal. And so by making the vertical hydraulic conductivity significantly lower than horizontal. We're kind of forcing the flow to be mostly horizontal and it's going to mimic that one layer solution closer. So that that, that makes sense intuitively. Um, and then let's go in and look at our uh, look at compare our contours again. I'm going to turn off those cell faces. And let's just toggle these on and off. And yep, sure enough, those are a little closer now, I would think, to the to what we had before. There's not as much of a gap. Maybe a little bit over here, but a little less over here. Overall, I'd say that matches those contours uh, even more closely. Um, all right, that's been really interesting. Let, let's look at something else. So um, what we've done here on this model is... Um, on the left and right boundaries, we've had um, we've used uh, specified head boundary conditions. Now, another way to represent that is with a drain boundary condition. So, what's the difference between a drain and a specified head boundary condition? Well, a specified head boundary condition is 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 very similar to a drain with a really large value of conductance. And remember, the conductance is a is a function of the the geometry and hydraulic conductivity of the materials between the aquifer and the external source sink. So this would imply that at the bottom of our drain, maybe we have some uh, fine grain sediments that are in, that result in a little bit of head loss as the water goes from the aquifer to the drain. And uh, that little bit of head loss can be accounted for in the drain package, and it, it's not accounted for with a specified head boundary condition. You just assume there's this direct hydraulic connection. So let's uh, let's convert these uh, boundary conditions on the sides from specified head to drain, and then play with the conductance a little bit, and uh, see what see what happens here to our solution. So let's go back, um, uh, turn those CAD layers off for a second, and uh, turn on our cell edges. And uh, let's see, we are going to uh, double click here and say we're going to convert that back to active. So that will be uh, just a regular boundary there. And uh, we can get rid of the one on the right as well. Just change it back to active cells instead of specified head. And now I'm going to right click on that 
column of cells. I'm going to go to, to the source sink dialog. I'm going to select drains on the top. There are two different kinds of drains. There's a regular drain and then the DRT drain return. Uh, a drain return allows you to uh, take the water that's flowing into the drain and, and use it as input to your model somewhere else. We don't want to do that. We want to use the regular drain package. So we'll do add BC here. And basically it makes an entry here for each of those cells. And uh, for the, but if you, you could, you can edit them individually now, but it has this special row at the top that's yellow. Anything you enter here gets automatically assigned to the entire column. So I'm going to put an elevation of 3820 and then tab over and you can see it's copies that down. And for the conductance, we're just going to do a really big value of conductance, 1e to the sixth and uh, copy that down uh, so just a really big value of conductance and then we get a different symbol over here for drains here on the left see that and we'll do the same thing on the right whoops excuse me right click and do sources and sinks drains add bc and this one is 3824 and 1e to the sixth for the conductance and uh, all right, um, let's give that a shot, see what we get. So I'm going to save that and run and uh, converged rather quickly. So it looks like we got a good solution. And uh, let's do our comparison again. Um, first of all, let's look at the flow budget. Under zones, that looks pretty much identical to what we had before. And uh, let's turn the grid cells off for a second so we can see those contours better. And let me just toggle those contours off and on. Um, oh, you know what I should have done? I should have saved a copy of the heads before, oh, for the six layer grid before we change them. But uh, you'll notice these differences are the same. Let me let me go straight to the to the uh, to the solu to the answer here. the The truth is, by switching from specified head to drain, but with a really high value of conductance, um, uh, essentially we uh, there's there's no change in the solution. Okay. Um, it should be pretty much exactly the same. And let me actually, to illustrate, I'm going to back up a little bit. Let me let me go back and change that to specified head. I'm going to do it the right way this time. It should just take me one minute to fix this. I'm going to make that specified head and 3824. And um, I'm going to go into the drain package and I'm going to say eh, delete everything. Okay. So we're going to run, save a solution here and run. So this is, uh, this is with the uh, six layers and specified head boundary conditions. So now I'm going to say convert to CAD and I'm going to call this six layers. Okay, so now we have um, we have that. We can toggle on or off. And now I'm going to go back and we're going to recreate those drains really quickly. So we'll say uh, active cells, uh, active cells, and then I'm going to say uh, let's do a drain 3820 1 e to the sixth and whoops right click drain 3824 and 1 e to the sixth there we go now we have drains and we will save and run and there's our solution and I hope this works out. I've wasted a lot of time. All right, here we go. So I'm going to toggle these 
these layers on and off. Yeah, there you go. You don't see any. There's no change whatsoever. So those contours are exactly the same. Okay? Contours are exactly the same. So again, with a specified head boundary condition, we get the exact same solution as using drains with a really high value of conductance. Now, let's go back to our instructions. And the last thing we're going to do here, it says, uh, compute a drain conductance value assuming K equals 0 0.5, L equals 50, width equals 6, thickness equals 3. And so, um, as you may recall, here, give me a, I'm going to pull up the diagram illustrating how we compute conduct. Okay, so here we are from the notes. Uh, can Darcy's law, we have Q equals K delta H over L times A. And uh, if we lump uh, this K A over L terms, the non delta H terms, then we get this new expression Q is equal to C times delta H, where the conductance is K A over L. So, uh, this is assuming we have this length of, this is a drain, and this is the length of overlap of the drain. So we're assuming at the bottom of the drain there's some sediments of some kind that, that represent a little bit of a barrier to flow between the aquifer and the drain, and so we get a little bit of head loss as you go through that. Um, the way we compute that conductance is we take the length of the drain in the cell, and that and then multiply it by the width of the of the drain. It says river here, but it's a drain in this case. And that gives us the area. So KL times W over M, which is the vertical thickness. And so we need to calculate that. And uh, based on what we've been given, uh, the length of the cell is 50. We know that because um, uh, it's based on our, our model geometry. 3,000 divided by 60 is 50, and 2,000 divided by 40 is 50. So the, the cells are 50 feet by 50 feet. And so the drain, the length of the drain overlapping will be 50 feet. And so let's use these uh, other terms. So if we say 50 times 6 divided by 3 multiplied by 0 0.5, that should give us our number. So um, we have uh, K equals 0 0.5. Uh, L equals 50, uh, width uh, equals 6, and vertical thickness, T, we'll call that, equals 3. So conductance is equal to K times the area, which is L times W, divided by the length of flow, which in this case is T, and that gives us a conductance of 50, oh, coincidentally. Um, and so let's go back to GMS. And we're going to go to the drain package. And we're going to say, um, I'll change that from a million down to 50. And we don't have the yellow uh, row here, but we do, if you select a cell, you'll notice in the right corner there's this little rectangle. If you double click on that, it basically copies everything down. It's kind of like Microsoft Excel. I'm not sure why it's done one way in one dialog and another way in another one, but but that's how you do it. You could also copy and paste if you want, but that copies it down. So we're going from a conductance of a million down to a conductance of 50. So let's uh, let's see what that does. So let's save our results and run our model again. And here we go. And now we're at our new contours, and we are going to compare them to our original contours. And as you can see, there's a pretty good difference there. Um, and what is different? Um, is it higher? Uh, so we have a so so there's some resistance uh, to push the water into the drain. It has to uh, go through a lower permeability segment, and so it ends up uh, you end up with a um, if you look at the contour the, the heads are actually higher now. In other words, the water table has to mound a little bit to get enough pressure to push it through that. Uh, 
the, those uh, relatively or less permeable drains. And so, and that's exactly what's happened here. And so let's, let's see if it made any impact on the flow budget. I'm not sure it would. Well, interestingly enough, now look, um, before we had, oh, 20, 21,000 going to the left and 10,000 to the right. So for whatever reason, we have more water going to the right versus the left. I'm not sure why, but more water is going to the right side versus the left side by changing that conductance. So conductance, you know, uh, in this case, um, if you have a more reasonable value of conductance, um, well, I say more reasonable, assuming you had some sediments in the bottom of your drain, um, in this case, now the drain would give you a different solution than what we got with the specified head boundary conditions. So anyway, that completes all the different things we're going to explore with this exercise. Um, we've learned that uh, switching to a multi-layer model makes a little bit of a difference, not a huge difference. Um, uh, but when you, uh, when you change the, the vertical hydraulic conductivity, that can, that can make a difference. Having a, uh, a vertical hydraulic conductivity that's, that's much lower than horizontal will make your six layer model behave more like the one layer model because the flow goes more horizontal. Um, we learned that a, uh, using a drain with a very large value of conductance is, is about the same as using a specified head boundary condition. And uh, when you lower the conductance to the drains, the water, uh, you get a higher water table because it has to mound up higher to push the water out of those drains. So uh, that was fun. We learned a lot of interesting things and hopefully getting a little more familiar with using uh, GMS at this point. And we will come back and revisit this with uh, uh, a few more changes in, a, in another exercise. We have three, we have yet another uh, case study we're going to do with this model.